On that note, all the dog yesterday was about the Giants receivers off day in South Beach. They say live on Sundays is like church for some people. Stephen A. and Max don't know about that establishment. Odell Beckham Jr., Sterling Shepard, Victor Cruz, and Roger Lewis all went down to Miami, partied at Live, Justin Bieber in the house, Trey Songs. The party then continued Monday with a little boating excursion. Here's Eli on his receivers. I think as a team, we, we kind of always pride ourselves on being well prepared. So when I saw some of the pictures, I was a little disappointed just because obviously they didn't pack uh, accordingly. Um, you know, <laughs> you know they, they didn't have any shirts, uh, obviously. And, you know, kind of all long pants, no shorts, no, you know, no uh, flip flops or anything. So just, you know, disappointed on their packing and, and not being prepared for that situation. Well played, Eli. Full disclosure, let me just tell you, Tim's never out of season or uh, out of style in my book. Max, has this changed your mind? The constructs, you like the construct. I do, yeah. I like them. Mm -hmm. um, changed my mind on what? On, on Eli? About, no. this, about this situation with the receivers going down there. No, uh, look, look, my, my opinion about it was and is, this is results-based now. Everyone there, these are adults. They can do what they want on their day off, you know? Uh, I get that. I got no problem with it. But Odell Beckham Jr. in particular should realize that he will now be judged on the game he has. And whether or not there's a correlation between his partying and if he doesn't play well his play, mm -hmm. he, that will be blamed and he'll be called immature. He should be aware of that if those pictures and images are disseminated on social media and everyone's aware of them. Furthermore, even if he balls but his team loses, he will also be blamed for that. That comes with the territory of being a superstar and really being the face of the team. I love the way Eli Manning handled this. First of all, he sold it. He did, he sold it. You're like, what, is he actually in the beginning? Is he actually saying he's disappointed in his receivers? He's gonna need these guys. Mm -hmm. and so he sold it, and then it was actually funny. It was, it was a joke worth telling. Mm -hmm. It diffused the situation, mm -hmm. and the truth underneath it all is a lot of these quarterbacks and these star players who you don't think of as partying on their days off. What do you think, they don't do it too? You think some star quarterbacks you think are squeaky clean aren't at least throwing a few back on their day off, but they're veteran enough and they are protected enough by pe enough people around them that it doesn't become public information. And so Eli here is doing the right thing and diffusing the situation as best he can. It worked and I thought it was funny. You know, <clears throat> My position is still similar to what it was yesterday, but I'm really tired of playing games. Let's just call it like it is. No, they didn't do anything wrong per se. They certainly didn't commit any crimes. Do they deserve to be excoriated? No, they do not. But can we all grow up, please, and understand what this is about? Perception is reality. Mm -hmm. You are not playing for free. You are asking patrons to patronize your product. And it's under the guise that there's a certain level of excellence, not only that you're going to put forth, but that you're committed to doing because you care that much, even more so than the paying customer. So when you sit up there, yes, it's an off day. No, you didn't break any rules. Yes, the coach has to come out there and support you or whatever the case may be. But if that's the position that we're going to take and we're going to leave it like that, can we all just shut the hell up and stop, let, you know, let, you know, you know, acting like there's a halo over our heads every time we listen to NFL folks come to us and talk to us about commitment and about being the first there to, you know, first to arrive and the last to leave and, you know, the hours upon hours of film. You know, we got ESPN, you know, 30 for 30s. We got ESPN films. We got network after network. Everybody is bloviating and talking about the commitment to excellence that people exude and put on display time in and time out. We talk about what they do off the court. When we talk talked about the great Kobe Bryant and his five championships. We talked about the, how the dude wakes up at 5.30. We talked about how when dudes were partying, he was in his room studying film. We talked about the same thing with guys like Michael Jordan and others. Think about this. All I'm saying is, Odell Beckham Jr. is a stud and a superstar as far as I'm concerned. I get all of that, and I'm not trying to sit up here and say that we should insult him or get on him because of it, mm -hmm. but from a macro perspective, let's put on our big boy pants and understand, wait a minute here. You talk about it being results-oriented. What you do on Sunday will determine blah, blah, blah. No. What happens is, is that I got to sit back, and I got to look at you, and I got to wonder are you willing to dot every I and cross every T no, in no, pursuit no. of that Super Bowl no. championship? That's, the way, that's what I'm looking for. That's the way it's usually done. Okay, the Kobe okay, Bryant that's fair, way, that's the fair. greatest of the greatest, okay. have an obsessive mm -hmm. thing where they are totally focused and you'll never catch him in a situation like Odell Beckham Jr. 
But the ones we celebrate in a special kind of way are the ones who can break the rules, where it seems as though the rules don't apply. Babe Ruth could live large, not work as hard as everyone else, and still be the best ever. Michael Jordan, and yes, he's already won a championship, but by way of example, Michael Jordan could go to Atlantic City and gamble till the wee hours of the morning, take a helicopter back to New York, and destroy the New York Knicks. The point is not that that's Odell Beckham Jr. Yet, that's why results matter. They win the Super Bowl and he balls out this whole time. Suddenly he is like that. The point is, we have a special way of celebrating those kind of players. There was a chess champion, Stephen A., once upon a time, 1930s, oh God. Oh no. called Raul oh, Capablanca, no. okay? And I like that name. Right. I like that name. Raul, Raul Capablanca. That's right. I'm going to remember and that. Whether I like or that name. Not, whether or not it was true that he was like a big personality uh-huh. that partied and didn't study, certainly not like Al Yekheim, yeah. who was a miserable human being but a great chess player and very well prepared. Only you would know that that's a chess right. player was a miserable human that's being. That's right. Go ahead. Go but the ahead. point He's is, the ahead. point is, Capablanca. Blanca carefully cultivated the image that he was above the rules, okay. that he didn't have to prepare okay. like everyone else, that he party. Because people love that too because it's hard to do. I, I get it. I'm not, I, it, it, your, your point is not incomprehensible. What I am saying is when you think about a guy like Michael Jordan, you think about a guy that was a champion first, there is something, no matter how much people may celebrate you breaking rules, but succeeding anyway, it's usually after you've proven you've already succeeded. People are usually offended by this notion that you haven't gotten Then what if he succeeds? Right. Hold on, wait. Then what if he Hold succeeds? On, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll answer that next Monday. My right. point is, when you are presumptuous mm-hmm. and you are already conducting yourself like you've already arrived, that people don't celebrate that. Clearly, Odell, they don't Odell, celebrate that. ball, Odell, and you're better win. Clearly, but if you he, he do, doesn't sorry, care. Victor Cruz was there too. I'm not. I'm not talking about no it just Odell. About anyone but Victor Odell. Cruz and was there. Sterling Shepard's a rookie, but clearly he doesn't and care Sterling what Shepard. any of us think because he chose to post it. He didn't have to. And uh, yeah, like you said, do you as long as you ball. Who have a tall task ahead of them on Sunday? They are underdogs, Max. Familiar territory when they face Aaron Rodgers and the Packers at Lambeau, but history is on Eli Manning's side. Eli actually has a better record as an underdog than as a favorite in his playoff career. Starting with his Super Bowl run in 2007 season, he led all starting quarterbacks in upset wins in the playoffs, going a perfect 7-0 as an underdog. Here's our John Gruden. Eli Manning is the one man that I just don't want to see in the playoffs. He is a flatliner. He has no conscience this time of year, and it's important that they obviously have some success early in this game, try to take the crowd out of it. Some guys, nothing bothers them. And Eli Manning is one of those players. Usually the guys that I think are in the Final Four, in the Super Bowl, world champions, you think of Brady, you think of Rodgers, Roethlisberger, Eli Manning, they're ice men. They have no feelings, none. They are able to concentrate on a snap-by-snap basis, and it's what separates them. That's where their greatness, I think, truly lies. Stephen A., he's done it before. John Gruden knows a thing or two about football. He's a believer. Do you have faith in Eli? Not right now. I don't have the same faith in Eli Manning that I used to have. Uh, He's a two-time Super Bowl champion, not taking any credit away from him. Uh, But when you look at him and consider the fact that he's the former number one overall pick, I dare say you can make a legitimate argument that his career, even with two Super Bowls, has been somewhat disappointing. And the reason that I say that is because coming into this year, uh, six of the last seven years, you had actually missed the playoffs. The one year you made it, you were you ended up being a Super Bowl champion. Max Kellerman, I'd like to remind you that two times he's won the Super Bowl. He's been to the postseason five times. Two times he's won the Super Bowl. The other three playoff series, all the three playoff seasons, he never won a playoff game. Mm -hmm. He lost each of those games. The only time he's won a playoff game is the year that he won the Super Bowl, and that's a very big deal. And I certainly can't poo-poo that. Um, it's not like I'm not a fan of his or anything like that. You're at least pooing it right well, now. Well, 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 I, I'm simply saying that I, I look at Eli Manning, and, you know, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm, 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 I'm playing injured today. I'm battling the flu. If I sound different, I apologize. Oh, no. But, but Max, Max, take it easy no, on Max, I'm coming over closer I, to you I, here. You know, it would and be nice. Shook, it would be nice. He I shook my hand. I shook my hand. I shook my I want you to get better. Don't get a sick. I shook my. I did shake his hand. Oh my God! But here's the deal. No, I'm a germaphobe. Where is the sanitizer? Listen, Eli Manning. Bottom line is clear. Eli is is you know is touch and go with him. You know, Eli could win the Super Bowl this year, or he could be done this Sunday. 
Anything's possible with him. And this Sunday, he's going up against Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. So forgive me if the odds are, and I'll make my prediction Friday, but forgive me if the odds are that Eli Manning will lose a game before he wins, goes on another Super Bowl run. I'm just not sold based on what I've seen from him this year. He's been a model of inconsistency. So let me get this straight. The Giants are a wild card. They're going to have yes. to yep. obviously know bye, and they're going to have to go on the road the whole correct. time. Yep. Got Eli Manning and the hottest defense in the game. Yep. Molly, you're a Giants fan. I'm liking our chances I'm right now. Good. I'm feeling pretty good. Now This is how we do it. Now, look, Aaron Rodgers is, oh, I'm not saying he's the greatest quarterback of all time. That's Tom Brady on the resume and everything. Aaron Rodgers, you call him the most talented. I think if you just say, look, eyeball test and everything, who's the best quarterback you've ever seen? I think I would say Aaron Rodgers. And he's playing at his best right now. Mm -hmm. So I get it. He's better than Eli, even when Eli elevates. Right. Fine. Yep. But Eli's playing the Green Bay defense. Aaron Rodgers got to play that Giants defense. That's true. Now, Eli may not look good at times in this game because they don't have an offensive line that can block anybody. Mm -hmm. So he's got to get rid of the ball fast. And that's why the receivers can't get in their routes. And when they bracket Odell, it gets to be a problem. But you tell me you give me Eli Manning. You mentioned 7-0 and as an underdog in the playoffs. That's the best record. Two Super Bowl championships, a hot defense, and now, for the first time in his career, Arguably, the best offensive weapon in the game who's not a quarterback is Odell Beckham Jr. Not to mention, you know, other good receivers on the team. This is a really good receiving core. Man, I like my chances. And to your point about Eli and um, underachieving as the number one overall pick, you ask the fans of any franchise who are picking number one. The Giants were supposed to pick fourth that year. They traded up. But even a top five picking franchise, which means they stunk that year, who is looking for a quarterback, you're going to draft the quarterback in this draft, number one overall. He will win you two Super Bowls. There's not, except for Patriots fans, there's not a fan in the NFL who wouldn't sign up for that. I'm one of those fans. I'd sign up for it knowing well, everything well, I know. I'd do it all again. Let's put things in its proper perspective. We appreciate the lucky pass to David Tyree. Oh, we don't, let me finish. A. Let me finish. We definitely appreciate that phenomenal pass down the left sideline to Mario Manningham. That was big time. You couldn't have thrown a ball more perfect than that under a clutch situation. But everybody acts like the New York Giants went out there and dropped 30 or 40 on somebody. They beat the New England Patriots 17 to 14. They beat them 21 to 17. I'm saying to you that their defense was primarily the culprits in those Super Bowl titles. Now, Eli Manning showed up when it counted, and he deserves credit for that. But at the same time, that defense was big time. When I think about this Giants team and this defense and what they're capable of doing, I can understand where you're coming from. I can't dismiss it. I'm simply saying the Eli Manning that we've seen from years past I think this Eli Manning is worse than the Eli Manning we've seen back then. And that's my concern. And by the way, he's gone to Green Bay. He's been in Lambeau and beaten Favre yeah. in the playoffs yes, he and has. beaten Rodgers in the playoffs. He has the same playoff wins as Aaron Rodgers in Lambeau. That's right. Bart Starr mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, uh, that, Terry Bradshaw that's right. and Joe Montana mm -hmm. and Tom Brady that's right. and Eli Manning, the right. only players in the history of the NFL to win mm -hmm. two, not one, two, Super Bowl MVPs. Mm -hmm. He didn't just ride the coattails of the defense. You call him lucky or whatever. He made plays down the stretch to he win the game. He plays with That's nothing to lose, record. everything. And look, I want to say so something clutch. about that really quickly. Mm -hmm. Your older brother's Peyton Manning. If, mm -hmm. or if you are Peyton Manning, you are ordained. He's going to be the greatest quarterback ever. And he basically does it. He's the best quarterback anyone's mm -hmm. ever seen. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. But when the playoffs roll around and the money's on the line, it is right. understandable that a guy like that can get tight. Because he has so much to live up to. Eli's a little brother. Well, most, it's his, he wasn't supposed to be that guy. His most, older brother was. Your most he got nothing to lose with your, the chips on the line. Your most compelling argument is that he's not, going against, he's not going against the Giants' defense. He's going against Green Bay's defense. But my argument to you would be this. If you can sit up there and look me in the face, despite what you're seeing with those eyes of yours, and tell me that Tom Brady's going to fall off a cliff, That's right. I can certainly say Eli can fall off a cliff on a play, in a playoff game. I could say that. To paraphrase I mean, it's Jay Z. A, it's a, it's a, to paraphrase Jay Z, don't bark up that cliff. That cliff will fall on you. <laughs> okay, I got you.